alone, and no one else. Well, we worship, reverence, priority. Many Christians have false gods that don't even know. So we saw something happen in the early 70s. Our country changed around. The, the government agencies that I was affiliated with and worked with, I saw it penetrate our government at every level. Compromise. And it came into the church. We see it in America. We know it's true. And what happens when we, when we take that first step of compromise, you've opened the door to all of Satan's work. And look what it has done to the church. The reason our country and the world is in such a mess that it's in, because the church has never fulfilled its full call to be able to serve. Somebody say amen? amen. But it's going to. It's going to. The day's coming, it's going to change, and the church is going to rise up out of the ashes. The church is going to rise up and be on fire for God one more time. Amen. And millions of souls are going to be saved. So that tells me that we need to be prepared. We need to, we need to be sure, we need to be devil sure that there's no false gods in our lives. The third is deity, Elohim. You know, the power and strength. We are in monotheism. In other words, the doctrine or belief that there is only but one true God. One true God. Not many gods, as people prefer. Because of his works, he has proven himself as the only true God. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 7, real quick. <coughs> this is the repeat, but there's some. There's an expository I want to share with you here. Just for a moment. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 7. You shall have no other gods before me. The expository says, In this, the first commandment, the great principle and basis of all the true spiritual assurance. If the, if the spiritual is asserted, spiritual is asserted. Monotheism, one God, as opposed to polytheism, many gods. Did you know that the world is being saturated today with the idea of many gods? There is but one God, and that God is Jehovah. <laughs> and self-esteem and eternal, who yet has personal relation with man. The Pope now has had the third global meeting. He's invited religious leaders from all over the world, they have now drafted the Constitution to the new one world order. One religion. One world religion. The Pope is leading the effort. Now, I don't want to get off on sidetrack too far, but just keep an eye out because he's the, he's the last Pope we're going to have. He's the one that's going to usher in the Antichrist. That tells you about the time we're in. But because of the spirit of compromise, the spirit of compromise has come into this nation and it's penetrated every part of this country. And that ought to present a challenge to us. We need to examine ourselves today and make sure that compromise has no place in our life. That compromise has not allowed a false god to rise up in our life. So as we read here, anything, a false god can be a person place or thing, anything as the Bible describes, can become a false god in your life if you allow all these things that are due God to go to that thing. It becomes a false god. And he says, there are no other gods before me, so where does that leave us? He's either God of all or not at all. That's just the bottom line. Now look at this for a moment. You shall not make unto yourself any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them or serve them, for I am the Lord your God, and I am jealous God. The false God, anything <laughs> worshipped by man as a deity. As earthly gods, the, the, the native Americans used to work, worship the mountains, the trees, all of God's creation, but they didn't focus on the Creator. They didn't realize they were, 
They were serving false gods. Anything worshipped by man as a deity can be the, can be the person, place, of thing. The only true God we serve, the supreme being, the eternal and the infinite spirit, creator, <coughs> sovereign of the universe, they being no more than the human attribute and power and deity. That's why we call him God. Isaiah 44, real quick. Money can be a false god. Sure. A position at work can be a false god. I think we got a lot of politicians in positions that they worship the position more than they do serving their country. Right. It's become a false god. So the Bible clearly says anything, say anything. Anything, anything, anything that comes between us and God, we come. 
comes to us giving God all the things that belongs to you. We won't be upset about it. You can be a person to place on earth. A place, a place on earth in the heavens and waters under you here that is worshiped and lifted up as God, as a deity. It's a false God. It's a false God. I, I just happened to, to be raised up in the neighborhood where there was a very, very large population of Choctaw Indians. And, and, and most of you know my mother's is half Seminole. And I saw them exposed to a lot of Native American practices and so forth. It was quite common to me to worship mountains and places and stars and whatever. I, I've been out in charge of large fires fighting fire, and we might get close to one of their sacred grounds, and they'd show up demanding that we don't do anything. Well, he knows no burden, what do you want, you know? But they, they, they would call these, these holy places. <coughs> places they worship. They would go to the top of the mountains and worship the mountain. They worship the sun god. They worship the stars. All of God's creation, but they never got to the creator. They missed the whole thing. Because he never got to the creator. My brother, just two brothers older than me, his name is Dave, and he, he's an evangelist, and he preached to all the Indian reservations all over Oklahoma. And he, he shared with me many, many stories about the conversion of the, of the Native Americans on the reservations, how hard it was for them to give up those old beliefs that had been there for thousands of years. Of course, they worshiped all of God's creation, but they never got to know God. They never got to know God. And how, how, how the Holy Spirit would come and open their eyes and open their spirits to finally see the truth. But all these years, hundreds and thousands of years, they've been worshiping a false God. So what this is saying to me today, as the church of Jesus Christ, we need to do a double check. Are we paying to everything that's due God? Are we giving him everything that's due God? Have we given him our life completely? Is he always number one priority? Is he first in all things? If not, then we've exposed ourselves to false gods. Amen. Things in one's life that take the place of the true God, that take the attention, commitment, that takes the reverence that belongs to God and gives it to something else, anything else, that thing becomes a false god. It requires change, it requires deliverance. Putting God first in all things. So why am I saying this to you? Because anything that gets the reverence and worship that is due God is in fact now a false God. Amen. It's that. So what do we do about it? First off, we examine ourselves. And we ask the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, if there's anything in my life that even comes close to a false God, check me out. Let me know what it is and help me to remove. Get it out of my life. So that I can pay him all the things that are due God, that I can pay him those things. That I can surrender my life in such a way that I, I am blessed when I just say these words. I belong to Jesus. Amen. He is my Lord and Savior. Amen. He's my Redeemer. He's my soon coming King. And there's nothing that's going to stop me from serving my God. Amen. Amen. You see, we need to get on fire for Jesus all over again. I had somebody the other day say, look, we need to go retire. I said, what's that? <laughs> the only thing I'm going to do is refire.
I've seen people I know Pastor has too. Good, God-loving people. Just unaware of what they were doing. But they were wanting to get closer to Jesus, closer to the Lord, be used in the Spirit, be used in the gifts. And it just seems like they can only go so far. And come to find out they had false gods in their life blocking their path. Blocking their blessings. The Spirit couldn't use them. The Holy Spirit cannot use you if you have a false god in your life. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so that's why it's so deadly serious and sinful. Many times. Good Christian people, loving people, church consistently, doing everything right, except there's been a false God placed up in their life. And you know what? Most of the time, it was either family or money. There you go. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you the truth. Somebody come to me before service today with a big idea with Pastor Sherry, financial gift of you. You know, this person came and said, You know, I've always believed I could just ask God for anything. I can just ask God for anything. Yeah. And you can't. Mm -hmm. Wednesday night when I was preaching the 23rd Psalm, that verse says, says I shall not want. Can you bring that back to the true translation? says, I shall not lack. I shall not lack. If, if, I, if I'm living the way I should live, if I'm not allowing any false gods to be raised up in my life and control my life, then I can ask anything of my Lord Jesus, and he will be my peace. Amen. <coughs> he says, you can ask anything in my name, and you shall have it according to his will. This so this is how easy it is for a false God to be raised up in our life. You know, there's a lot of people that don't believe today. They have to have a Sunday. Guess what they're in God's head? Do a lot of transformers of this false God to a lot of people out there today. They have to have a Sunday fishing. I don't like to fish. I'm not wrong with fishing. I don't do it on God's day. I don't do it when I should be here. See? But that's become a false god to Anything can become a false god. <laughs> so we need, we need to be careful. We need to be on the watch. We need to be the watchful on the wall and understand that the enemy is trying to plant false gods in all our lives. Yes. I had somebody tell me today, this is, my, my family has always done this. For years we go over the day of trout season. On the streams. We go camp out and go fishing. I said, how many times have you kept you out of church? This happens every year. It's woo. So something's wrong with that fish. Doesn't mean you can't take a vacation. You see, that trout fishing could become your God. It's how easy it is. That's how easy it is. So why am I saying this to you today? Because anything that gets the rivers. Worship. The things that are due God, those things have become false gods. Has a false god come between you and the only true and living God? It's a question of you. When we check ourselves against the Word, the Bible confirms that it can be anything. It happens so suddenly sometimes, so suddenly, suddenly, and suddenly. your attention. Go deeper and deeper into that world of false gods. Every example we see in scripture are people who begin to worship false gods, images, look what happened. See, isn't it interesting? When Moses was still up on the side of the mountain and Moses gave <laughs> him the Ten Commandments, why do you think the very person he gave him is you shall not have any other gods before him? He knew what they were doing down the mountain. He knows what we're thinking. He knows what we're thinking. Yes. So it's so, it's so serious, it's so deadly important. And if we have
God, if, if, if we have to even have one risk of lost God to be raised in our life, we need to cut that thing's head off and get rid of it right today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We serve a God that really, really can do all things. Yes. We serve a God that loves us so much, He wants us to know about these false gods so that we don't fall into the trap. Because it's easy to do. It's easy to do. So we have to be so full of the Holy Spirit that any time a false God wants to be raised in your life, we get that old Holy Ghost check and say, wait a minute, this is wrong, not for me. Not allowed. So it's amazing, it's amazing how easily it happens sometimes. It's amazing that it can be in 